You are called to join the king's guard. Welcome to Ms. Mojo. And today we're looking at the things the woman king got factually right and wrong. We are the spear of victory. We are the blade of freedom. For this list, we're looking at key details and plot points from this epic historical film that are factually accurate, as well as the creative liberties taken by the filmmakers. Since we will be discussing plot details, a spoiler alert is now in effect. What was your favorite part of The Woman King? Let us know in the comments. The characters' accents. Wrong. Hollywood films have long been criticized for their egregious misrepresentation of accents from African countries. It is our cause. It is for all of us. Oh, us. Us, you are the first king to come here in centuries, and now you speak of us. Criticism similar to that which plagued movies like 2015's Concussion and Marvel's Black Panther resurfaced when the trailer for The Woman King was released. And while the performances in the eventual film were a little easier to swallow, one glaring blunder was the sheer variation in the characters' accents. Aneska, you are asking me to take them to war. War. Some things are worth fighting for. King Gezo's John Boyega said to Men's Health that he'd use his parents' Nigerian accent. Naoi's Tusu Mbedu sounded more like she was speaking with her native South African cadence, while Viola Davis largely relied on Hollywood's generic African accent. While we don't expect things to be 100% accurate, some consistency in the speech patterns would have gone a long way. A lot of black men and a lot of black women coming together, uh, collaborating, um, despite language barriers, despite cultural barriers, um, because they're all kind of de dedicated and determined by this one goal that brings them together. The Kingdom of Dahomey under Oyo control. Right. The relationship between the Kingdom of Dahomey and their neighbor received a pretty accurate representation in the movie. With consistent conquest, by 1727, Dahomey had become a regional power. From then on, the kingdom was at frequent warfare against the Oyo Empire, which was another great empire in the region. In the 1730s, after a bloody war against Oyo, Dahomey became one of their tributary states. This meant having to offer some of their people annually, as tributes to their Oyo overlords, which was well portrayed in The Woman King. However, when the real-life King Gezo became Dahomey's ruler in 1818, he sought to put an end to that. Our ancestors weep for the pain we have felt in the dark hulls of ships bound for distant shores. In 1823, the year in which the movie is set, Gezo led the Agoji and the rest of the Dahomeyan army against Oyo soldiers. Just like in the movie, they won this battle, bringing a permanent end to their tributary status. Our ancestors demand we rip the shackles of doubt from our minds and fight with courage. We fight not just for today, but for the future. Recruitment into the Agoji. Right. As one of the primary army factions of the Kingdom of Dahomey, the Agoji at their peak reportedly numbered more than 6,000. To get this many female soldiers, women were recruited from all nooks and crannies of the kingdom. From captives, from the ranks of the king's wives, or involuntarily if relatives complained about their behavior. In The Woman King, one of the central characters, Nawi, joins the Agoji after she is offered to the king by her father because of her apparent bad behavior. Were you this arrogant with your family? No wonder they gave you away. This was a common occurrence, as leaders of the Dahomey Agoji sought out particularly rebellious women to join their ranks. Involuntary recruits were also obtained from foreign captives, while free Dahomeyan women were allowed to enroll voluntarily, with some joining from as early as eight years old. I, I want to be with the others. I want to fight for my king. A goji preference of palm oil trade over slave trade. Right. In the 18th and 19th centuries, Dahomey thrived on the Atlantic slave trade. But by the 1840s, the British had abolished the practice and made it difficult for Dahomey to continue the trade. They began to seek monopolist control over Dahomey and West Africa as a whole. Dahomey and Oyo now had new enemies. At that time, the kingdom was split into two political parties. The Elephant Party, consisting of the king, wealthy traders and male military officers, went against England's wishes. While the Fly Party, made up of the Agoji and lower-level traders, favored palm oil trading in a bid to maintain a strong business relationship with England. This validates the stance of the fictional Naniska in The Woman King, who proffers palm oil to Gezo as an alternative to slave trade. 
Although, her vehement opposition to the practice in the film is a little unrealistic. When the wind blows, our ancestors push us to march into battle against those who enslave us. The violent history of the Dahomey Kingdom. Wrong. Since the woman king is only inspired by true events, it takes creative license in retelling the story of the Dahomey Kingdom. Because of this, most of the atrocities committed by the Agoji at the behest of King Gezo are glossed over. Need for defense against nearby slave raiding states and the need to collaborate with Europeans and other Africans to guarantee the safety of their children caused them to perpetuate the very thing they were trying to avoid. In the film, the Agoji are portrayed as fierce protectors of their land. And while this is true, it only paints half the picture. Are we trying to cook? You are caught in a body, not a ham. The all-female unit actively invaded neighboring towns, capturing their citizens and leaving many dead in their wake. They were also known to raise such villages to the ground. The Dahomey people reportedly also conducted an annual custom ceremony, where they routinely offered up to 500 prisoners as a human sacrifice to their ancestors. The kings unfortunately view these killings as humanitarian, and to justify these acts to their people, they claim that such rituals were required to guarantee their continued strength, vitality, and courage to rule. The existence of the Agoji. Right. The powerful all-female team of warriors featured in The Woman King is indeed based on the real-life Agoji. The primary thing that draws our attention to Daomi and the thing that has given them world fame was the power of women in that kingdom. While it's not known when exactly the Agoji was formed, their origin dates back to a group of elephant hunters formed in the 1600s under the rule of King Hoikbaja. It was Queen Hangbe, Hoegbaja's daughter and successor, who first designated them as bodyguards of the crown. One European visitor to the palace reported that the guardhouse held about 40 women, armed with a musket and cutlass each. Certainly Agaja's successor had women soldiers and palace guards, as he is reported to be guarded only by his wives, who number two or three thousand. As seen in the movie, under King Gezo, the Agoji became more combatant and increased in strength, ballooning from a few hundred to about 6,000 women. It's believed that the adoption of the Agoji into Dahomey's army was due to a significant loss of their male population in previous battles. In a world where women are usually subservient or deferential to men, this marked an extraordinary development in human history. Celibacy of the Agoji Right. In The Woman King, the young Nawi takes a liking to the half-Dahomean, half-Portuguese Malik, but soon learns that all Agoji are expected to remain chaste. I see you flirting. This is not allowed? You know it is not. This is one detail the film gets absolutely right. Upon taking their oath of service, the real-life Agoji were, in fact, not allowed to get married to any man. The men who are soldiers have wives and children, but the Agoji cannot. Now is that fair? This is because they were formally considered to be the wives of the king. A household squadron of women was said to accompany the Dahomey kings everywhere in the late 18th century. Since they never shared his bed or got intimate with him, this meant that the Agoji soldiers essentially took a vow of celibacy. While this rule was strictly adhered to, it is documented that a lot of them also explored romantic relationships with each other. The Real Life Figures Right. As a historical film, The Woman King does its best to represent an actual era in the history of the Dahomey Kingdom. No kingdom in all of Africa shares this privilege. While some characters are entirely fictional, others were based on, or at least loosely inspired by, real people. Most notable is Gezo, the young, recently enthroned king played by John Boyega. Gezo ruled Dahomey from 1818 to 1859, after overthrowing his brother from the position. Although Naniska and Nawi, as portrayed in the movie, never existed, they were named after documented female warriors. Naniska was also possibly modeled after real-life Agoji generals like General Sedong Hongbe. The Brazilian slave trader in the movie, Santo Ferreira, was also likely inspired by an historical counterpart who was key in Gezo's rise to power. While the historical record is thin, he seems to have overthrown his brother with the help of the powerful Portuguese-Brazilian slave trader, Francisco Felix de Souza. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Combat Skills and Bravery of the Agoji 
Right. Train hard, fight harder. We fear no one. And we fear no pain. The Agoji were just as skilled in combat in real life as they were portrayed in The Woman King. In order to be recruited onto the force, prospective soldiers underwent intense physical training, including being conditioned to withstand pain and running through a field of thorns. The crawl through the thorns will show whether the two new recruits have enough courage and endurance to be in the king's palace guards. The resulting warriors were documented to be so fierce in battle and highly disciplined that they were considered more effective than the male warriors. The Agoji participated in slave raids of neighboring villages and fought in the battle that liberated Dahomey from the Oyo Empire. Although described by French soldiers as having, quote, incredible courage and audacity in battle, the Agoji still suffered crushing losses during the two Franco Dahomeyan Wars in the 1890s. One account claims that as many as 2,500 were killed in those battles. One report that after the battle, the Dahomeyans were struck dumb at the loss that they had sustained, especially their female soldiers. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.